within a country, then within a country, uh, in a sense, you have interested parity in the uh, narrow, simple, or possibly even trivial sense that uh, interest rates within a country are the same. The interest rate in Tamil Nadu is not going to be different from the interest rate in uh, Delhi or in Mumbai because capital flows freely between Mumbai, Chennai, and Delhi, and we have the same currency. So what we want to do is to make a departure from that uh, by bringing in different uh, currencies and we'll see what difference uh, that makes to the analysis. But what we will do is uh, to retain the assumption of capital mobility. So just as you can easily move your capital from Delhi to Chennai, so we'll assume that you can do a similar thing between New York and Delhi. Um, now, that, uh, that assumption is not quite uh, valid, uh, but it helps uh, as a starting point for analysis. And once we know the benchmark relationship in the context of free capital mobility, then we can qualify and see uh, around that benchmark to what extent there would be a variation around that uh, benchmark relationship. So, Let's get started with this. So let's consider uh, two countries. Let's say this is India and uh, US, and we have um, two currencies. Uh, rupees and uh, US dollar. And um, E is Change rate. This is the um, price of dollar in terms of rupees. So if the exchange rate is 62, then what that means is that the price of one dollar is equal to 62 rupees. And um, uh, E not. So the other thing we'll do is consider two dates. Again, um, you can extend the analysis to multiple dates. What that means is that at the moment we are considering um, it's uh, 15 February 2015. So that's current date, date zero. You could consider date one to be one year from now, one month from now, one week from now, one day from now. And uh, whichever period you take, you, you could consider multiple periods. For example, if you are considering uh, one period equal to one year, then you can consider a multi-period model, which would be um, 15 February 2015, 15, 15 February 2016, 15 February 2017, and so on. But again, to get the essence of the analysis, we'll consider simply two dates, one period, which is to say 15 February 2015, 15 February 2016. Let's uh, make that simple. And instead of saying 15 February, we can say two dates, date 0 and date 1. So E0 is the exchange rate uh, at date 0 and E1 is the exchange rate at date 1. And uh, the other notation is um, expectation of E1. This is at a future date, we do not know. This is known. This is unknown. And um, we can talk about an expected um, exchange rate and we see as we proceed what uh, one can mean by that. Uh, so, this is for expectation. Here, with two dates, it's very simple. Uh, the expectation must be taken at date zero. But if you have multiple periods, then in that case, you have to specify two things. One is the exchange, the date for which you are talking, and the other is when you are taking the expectation. So, in this case, it would be E0, E1. So that is to say, expectation taken at date 0 for exchange rate that will prevail at date 1. 
But since this is simple analysis with date 0 and date 1, I needn't uh, get into this complication and uh, I can just write this as uh, this simple notation E of uh, small e1. And uh, I is the, in, as I said, uh, we will talk about the interest rate. So, the interest rate um, on debt instrument denominated in rupees. Now, uh, observe, I haven't said this is domestic interest rate, uh, and I'm not talking about uh, domestic interest rate and foreign interest rate. Instead, I'm talking, saying uh, interest rate on debt denominated in rupees, interest rate on debt denominated in dollars. The reason I'm saying that is because uh, you, uh, for this purpose, you need not consider uh, domestic debt instrument and foreign debt instrument, you can think of um, uh, city bank or for that matter HDFC bank which offers you deposits, deposits that are denominated in rupees which are what we are familiar with. They could also be deposits denominated in dollars. Now uh, there are restrictions in India and uh, for ordinary resident Indians you do not have such deposits. Uh, but uh, in Europe, in UK, US, uh, you have uh, such facilities available. So there you could talk about uh, interest rates on debt denominated uh, in two different currencies in the same financial center. And when you have capital mobility, then you can talk more meaningfully about these things. So here, uh, uh, let me write it more generally. In some cases, it may mean uh, domestic interest rate and foreign interest rate. But more generally it is interest rates on debt denominated in one currency and on debt denominated in the other currency. So let I star be the interest rate denominated in dollars. And again for simplicity I will write it as dollars and not US dollars. It is understood that we are talking about the US dollar and not some other dollar. And uh, uh, again, for simplicity, uh, assumption one, um, there is no risk premium. Uh, that is to say that uh, people are risk neutral. Uh, what that simply means is that um, if you have um, if you have a random variable uh, and you take the payoff of that, you take the expectation of that payoff, if the expected payoff is let us say 100 rupees and the certain payoff is also 100 rupees, then uh, to say that there is no risk premium is to say that uh, the investor is indifferent between uh, two investments, in one case the certain return of 100 and in the other case expected return of 100. When you have a gap between these two, then you talk about a risk premium, but here we will abstract from that and for uh, large corporations which uh, participate in many many trades, um, this is not a bad assumption. Again, one can qualify the analysis, uh, but it's important to get at the benchmark relationship in the first place. And second, so um, no risk premium and no liquidity premium. which also says that there are no transactions costs. Uh, again, this is for uh, simplicity. Uh, one can work by the basis. So, uh, trades in uh, some currencies, in debt instruments, some currencies can be more liquid than trades in other currencies. And because of that, uh, you can have a situation where um, extra return is uh, there in equilibrium for the returns on debt instruments denominated in some currencies and not in others. Um, but uh, we leave that, uh, treat that as a part of the trade rather than as the uh, hardcore analysis. And um, with that we can move to 
be a tougher thing uh, as mentioned earlier within a finance sector rather than two finance so that also makes it clear that there is capital mobility Should I put the board up? It will stay. Ah, it will stay. denominated in uh, rupees and uh, the other one is a debt instrument denominated in uh, dollars. Um, and uh, let us say that it's only the economic consideration which matters, uh, meaning there are no other considerations like patriotism or something like that. It's pure economics uh, here. And uh, also, um, uh, these, uh, we don't have to worry about the uh, safety in one sense, we talked about already no risk premium. Um, so it's not that uh, it's safer to invest in dollar debt rather than rupee debt. So that aspect, uh, again, abstracting from that. So uh, we have to uh, uh, write a condition such that the returns from the two instruments are the same. Because if there is any difference between the returns on the two instruments, then there will be an arbitrage opportunity. So we need to write the no arbitrage condition. And um, uh, what is that? Uh, for some reason, we consider 100 rupees. And uh, I have to see the return on uh, rupee debt and on dollar debt. So I have 100 rupees. And what do I get at the end of one period? Remember, we considered only one period. So, and I is the interest rate on uh, rupee debt. So at the end of one year, what I will get if I invest on a debt instrument denominated in rupees is 100 into 1 plus 1. This is uh, simple straightforward. Uh, that return must be equal to the return that I can get by investing the same 100 rupees in uh, dollar denominated uh, debt. So uh, that would be where I take 100 rupees, I convert these into dollars. So that would be uh, divide that by the exchange rate, the current exchange rate. I know that this is uh, E naught. The notation is up there. So these many dollars, and I will get um, the interest rate now is I star. So the interest rate on the two are uh, different. We will later see if there are conditions under which the interest rates can be the same. But um, in general, uh, the two interest rates are different. And uh, I get so these many uh, dollars uh, fetch this much return. The cross return at the end of the period is so many dollars. I want to convert that back to rupees. So to multiply that by the exchange rate that will prevail at date 1. So this will be E. Uh, one, uh, but I do not know the value of E1, which is why we talked about expectation of the exchange rate. So I will consider the expected exchange rate, and um, that completes the uh, relationship. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, there is no arbitrage. So if there was a gap, then the arbitrages would have taken action. Uh, till this relationship is established. Right? So this is the basic no arbitrage condition. Um, if there is any issue with this, let me know. Otherwise, we proceed. Any questions? Okay. <coughs> so as you can see, this hundred was really not required. You can consider it 
per rupee any amount in fact uh, so it doesn't make a, a difference so let me write this more simply as 1 plus i i star subtracting uh, this here so when you get this just a few more 